Hey guys, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. All right, I have the Arcadian KVD 21 gateway right here and I just took it apart. So this is the outer housing that comes apart on it. And I only used a few tools, really two flathead screwdrivers and one small, um, like a Phillips one um, screwdriver to get the screws out. And it's fairly quick and easy, so we'll go through that process of how I get into here. And then we'll do a little tour of this unit and show you some of the features, uh, how to do uh, external antenna ports on there, and anything else that I've noticed on here, especially relative to that Nokia gateway that you can barely see back there in that corner. So let's um, take it apart and then we'll look through it. All right, this is going to be my second video about this T-Mobile home internet Arcadian KVD21 gateway. My first setup and review um, is processing right now. So I'm gonna start to take this guy apart and see inside of it and as well as see uh, if there's a way that we can connect external antennas to it. And hopefully I won't break it, but if I do, I will pass that info along to you so you know how not to break your um, device or should I say T-Mobile's device. So. Let's um, let's have at it. All right, so hopefully we don't need a lot of tools for this. The rubber feet uh, basically come off and then we get to see some little um, screw heads down here, just some Phillips. guys are out of there now. So it feels like there's a screw hole right here. Sure enough, there is. All right, so we're popping this guy out of here. Now I think these two halves maybe separate.
so there's these little clips in there that I am trying to pop out and you have to go from the inside and pull them outwards to get them to unsnap without hopefully breaking them. So I've been messing with this guy trying to get to figure out how to open up these um, the sides. You can see these two little clips here, but there's obviously something holding it here. So referencing some of the FCC picks, I figured out how to do it. So I basically put the screwdriver in here like this. I pick up this side a little bit, and then I take the second flathead screwdriver once I open it up a little bit. off like that. And there's a thing there's a handful of clips that go down the side of here. Once you get it started, then it's pretty easy. That side, I gotta do the same thing on this side now. Okay. Okay, so this panel just comes off here. Now I have this guy. And so, yeah, I took off this screw out the backside here. That allows this guy to come off. I was trying to see if you could get away with not even taking that screw off and tearing up the sticker. But I think in order to get to the antennas that you want to get to, yeah, you're going to need to pop that sticker, break that sticker, so there's a risk there that uh, you'll get caught, basically. Okay. So here is our unit. Alright, so now that you've seen how I popped it off there, I did not break anything. The hardest part, honestly, was the top piece. And I'll try to show this to you. If it doesn't show up on the screen well, I'll take some pictures and, and throw them overhead. But this is fairly well uh, blocked in there. It has a couple features on it. One is there's a little retaining um, clip on each corner and it has a hook and the hook is on the inside. So you can't take a screwdriver and press inwards because that's actually clipping it in better. So you have to go around the side and pull it out to get the clip to uh, unhook. And that's on each side. And then additionally to that, it has these um, little uh, columns 
that go into holes here to help keep it all aligned so that you can't um, pull it apart very well. So that's the most challenging part. I'm afraid if you just rip it up, it will break, but you know, there's something to be said. If you do take a corner and you bend it up like that, that is um, the proper direction at least to unhook that hook. So um, you can mess with that and just be careful not to, not to snap it there. After you get that off, um, and um, you gotta take the screws out of the bottom, those are easy. On these side pieces, how they work is each side has three of the female ends on the front, and then the back has the little male guys along the inside of the, um, the edge, and then it has a little feature for aligning it. And so what you wanna do is the back half wants to pull outboard to disengage from the clips, but this uh, little alignment feature here is preventing you from pulling the whole side out and just dis disengaging it. So you start down here at the bottom, you get this bottom, which is the biggest one, disengaged, and then you um, work your way up for each one. And that's on both sides. That wasn't that hard and you have to, um, you know, just kind of go slow there. But once you do that, that's fairly easy. Once you get one side off, then the other side pops off. And then the only other uh, screws you gotta mess with are these, um, the, I'm sorry, there were some screws up here on the top. I think there's two of them that you take out. And there's four on the bottom underneath each rubber leg. And then you do have to take off that one screw that's on the back here, it's right below the QR code. Um, and that is needed because if you don't take that off, then you can't get the back cover off. Uh, so that screw goes in right here by the ethernet ports. And if you don't take that off, you can't get in here to these ports. So if we look around here, one, the first thing that's obvious is there is no fan on here, just like the Nokia, so it's fan free. Now the Verizon ones that I have, the um, especially the little cube one, which is an ASCII brand, I believe, that one does have a fan in there. But again, this one has no fan. And then if we look here, you know, just visually, the antenna panels are smaller, especially for the um, cellular stuff than the Nokia. The Nokia has them all about the size of this, this big one here, and it has uh, all four of them that same size. But this unit has this LTE D, which goes to a pin labeled D, and then it has a M on this other back side. And that one goes to a port named M. And then you have M1, which goes to M1. And then there's a M2 on this side. So it has four antennas. And, you know, I've, um, I'm working with Waveform on this. I, I talked to them about their uh, antenna options. And, you know, we think it will work the same one that works on the Nokia T-Mobile. It should work on this guy. So um, I have that sitting right here. Actually, I'm gonna hook that up and, and see what it works. But our theory is to start with the D, so this LTE D and the M as the main one. And then the M1 and M2 would be a, a secondary MIMO. But uh, I'll confirm that. The other interesting thing in here is there's two more antenna looking ports. So I have to look at that. But uh, just to finish up what else it has, it's the same thing that the Nokia has, which is this GPS, Bluetooth, and then it has, I think, three different, uh, three or four Wi-Fi ones that are small ones that are, are um, scurried around here. So the Wi-Fi ones are black cables, and then the GPS has a white cable, and then also the cellular ones have a white cable. And so all of the cellular ones are on the right side of the of the gateway here. Um, and then I'll have to zoom in here and get the camera out to get these pictures. But basically the cellular ones are along the top and then one is along the side right behind the LCD screen. And so again, these are labeled in here, M1, M2, D and M. So D and M are the ones closest to the LCD screen let me just double check to make sure that I'm not lying because the only thing that um, 
like T-Mobile or someone could tell is if you broke that that sticker back here you know you could maybe try to remove the sticker or do like a clean cut or something on it but I'm pretty sure you can't yeah you might so you can probably try to get to M and D without taking the back off so if those are successful ports for putting an external antenna then you might not even have to remove the um, the back ports um, you know this back panel at all so I'll, I'll test that out so we'll find that out once I do the antenna install okay so what I was saying the interesting part is that it actually has two more ports that are empty and that is uh, labeled four and five and it's right alongside these other cellular ones so it's interesting to see uh, just what they do and because it's so tempting I'm gonna plug in an external antenna port or um, to those ports and see if it changes my signal at all or if they're completely unused or what but um, we'll see what that does so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a separate video now for actually testing out this external antenna I'll go through all that but I wanted to share this video first this is how you disassemble it and then um, it's easy to go back together it's just the opposite that you you took it apart and like I said besides the sticker it is non-destructive and it doesn't hurt anything and in fact I read the T-Mobile um, terms of service and it tells you that you have to return it you know undamaged con undamaged and, and working condition and you know none of this damages it so um, to me that uh, actually kind of abides by the agreement there all right well stay tuned because we have a lot of testing to do here i'm going to spend several hours to test it before i i give the results so um give me a little bit of time there but this uh, testing video will be out soon and i'll probably have to go back and i'll test this waveform antenna on the nokia one as well because in the past when i did the antenna install it was not waveform products so uh, we will test it on them as well and probably see which one does the best. And then at some point I'm going to have to get rid of at least some of these gateways because I'm paying 50 bucks a month for each one. So um, we will uh, test them out and video them and then stay tuned. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already and like the video if this is stuff that you like to see more of.